All oh, right then, my friends. So now we're in a stage where we've got this form and we want to kind of hook up the functionality to it so that when a user adds some data into it and selects an author, presses plus or add, then it's going to make some kind of mutation on the GraphQL server and add that data to the database and update the UI here, right, with the new book. So we're going to do this over a series of one or two videos because there's a few different steps involved. The first step is to declare a state for this application to keep track of a few different things. We want to keep track of the value of each one of these input fields, right? So we're going to do that. Then what we're going to do is attach an event to this thing right here so that when we submit the form, it's going to take that state and do something with it. Eventually, it's going to make a mutation on the GraphQL server, right? But for now, what we'll do is maybe just log the state to the console so we can see what the user has typed in here or selected. So let's go ahead and do that to begin with. So right now in the code, we have our add book.js component. So the first thing I'm going to do is set up the state of this component. So we'll do a constructor right here, which takes in the props. And let me just line this up a little bit. All right. So inside here, we say super props. I'm not going to delve into all of this right now. Um, this is kind of convention in uh, class-based components in React. So then we can say this dot state is equal to an object, right? And inside this object, we can keep track of the different um, form fields in our component, the state of those form fields, if you like. So to begin with, the name is going to be an empty string, right? And the genre is going to be an empty string. And then the author ID is again going to be an empty string. This is the initial state of this component because nothing has been selected or typed in our form. But as we do type into our form, or as we do select an author, this state is going to be updated. Okay. So the next thing we need to do is come down here and update the state of this component when a user either types something into the form field or select something down here. So let's do these things first of all, right? So what we need to do is attach an on change kind of listener to this form field. So inside here, we're going to do a, uh, an ES6 arrow function. We'll take the event object and pass it through to the function. And we're going to say this dot set state, which allows us to change the state or set the state. And what we want to do is pass through an object with the different parameters we want to update in the state. Now, we want to update the name parameter in this case because this is for the book name. So we're going to set the name equal to E, which is the event right here, dot target, which is this input field, the target of the event when this changes, dot value. So it's going to grab whatever is inside this input field at that point when it changes. So if I type a K into this input field, what it's going to do is detect that, fire this function here, and update the state so that the name becomes K, right? If I update it with KE, then the state, the name property of the state will become KE. So we need to attach this now to not just this, but also down here. We'll paste that in. And instead of name, we now want to update this to the genre. And then finally, we want to add it to this thing, the select over here, so that when a user selects something and the select field changes, we're going to update the author ID. Right. So remember, when we output the options here, the value is the author ID of each option. So when we select one right here, we find this function and we get the value of that option. OK, I hope that makes sense. So we're updating the state here. The next thing we need to do is attach an event listener to this thing right here, the form, so that when it's submitted, we fire some kind of function. So to do that, we'll say on submit and set it equal to this to refer to this component dot submit form. We've not created this function yet, but we will do in a minute. And we're also going to bind the context of this at this moment in time. Because this right here refers to the component itself. And we want to bind that context to this function so that when we call this inside this function, it's also going to refer to the component itself. Okay, so let's create that function now. 
We'll do it beneath the display authors function. So enter submit form and we're going to take through the event object as a parameter. We can do that when we're reacting to an event right here. OK, it automatically takes that event object inside. What we're going to do is prevent the default action from occurring. Now, previously inside the browser, if we type in a load of garbage here and then click on add, then all it does is kind of refresh the page. That there, my friends, is the default behavior of this um, event. So now, now we want to stop or prevent that default behavior. So what we need to do is call a method on this event right here. This is not React code. This is just general JavaScript. And we're going to say prevent default. So that prevents the default behavior of this event. And it's no longer just going to refresh the page, right? It's not going to do that. Then what I'd like to do is console.log the state of this component. So this thing right here. So we're going to say this dot state. Remember, we said bind the context of this to this function. So inside this function, this refers to the component itself. So we can say this dot state, right? So just quickly again, we've attached these on change listeners to each input type, these two text inputs and the select. Now, when we have a change, for example, when I select something or when I type something into these fields, we're going to call this function, which is setting the state of the component. In this case, it's setting the name to the e.target.value. So the value inside this input field, whatever text is there. In this case, it's the genre. And in this case, it's the author ID, right? Because that's the author we're selecting. So when we update the state here, it's updating the state properties, the name, the genre and author ID. So when we're finished and we click on the button to add the author at the end, what we're doing is calling this function right here and binding the context of this. So when this function fires, we're preventing the default action on the event. Then what we're doing is logging this dot state. So whatever values are on the name, genre and author ID property at that time, we're going to log those to the console. OK, so let's save all this. Let's check it out in a browser. And now if I say book name, blah, uh, genre, blah, blah, as you can tell, I'm terribly original and we'll select an author to be Brandon Sanderson. Click add. Then we get this logged to the console. First of all, it didn't refresh the page. That's because we prevented that default action. And so the state now is logged to the console. We have the author ID right here, which is the author ID, presumably of Brandon Sanderson, the genre, blah, blah, and the name, blah. So we've successfully garnered that information from the form. We know now what book the user wants to add to um, the data, to the list, if you like. So we'll stop there for this tutorial. But in the next tutorial, we'll look at taking this data and see how we can make a mutation on the GraphQL server with it to add this new book to the database.